Uh, a very good morning uh, to all of, uh, all of you present here. Uh, this is Abdul uh, Aziz, a student of English Language and Literature Department. And uh, my group members are uh, Safiya Sosamuniha and uh, Nilo Foyeshe. Actually, my heartfelt gratitude goes to our uh, site level site for assigning such an interesting uh, presentation. As well as I cannot but uh, give thanks to my honorable uh, Saida Fatawaman and uh, honorable uh, Arif Hassan for being with us. So, uh, let's uh, hear the presenters. Let's uh, have a look at the slides. So, what can you see? What is the first line of this slide? Table of contents. That means I'm going to uh, meet all of my group members cover up all these points. Basically, we have divided our uh, whole presentation into these three key points. And the first one is interaction and theories, and the second one is theory and data collection, and the third one is uh, data analysis and conclusion. The very first one is going to be covered by myself, and uh, let's move to the next slide. So here you see uh, the interaction. Basically, our uh, assignment is assigned on our Victor project. And what is our uh, project title? Our project title is that you him is a she, a uh, contrastive analysis. You can say that you can uh, elaborate, uh, elaborate it here from a psycholinguistic perspective. What is that? So here, uh, here you can see uh, cognitive model, and this is a famous uh, uh, theory by William Unasis uh, Maria, who is uh, very famous in this sector. And uh, he was born in uh, he was born on uh, 7th May uh, 1938 uh, in Amsterdam. And according to uh, his theory, there is a system or a structure in our mind, which is called blue field. So uh, I'm repeating again. There is a system or a structure in our mind which is called blue field. And it is used to, language, uh, to production of languages. I mean, whenever we are, uh, we want to produce languages, we have to use all these points. And uh, moreover, there are three uh, levels in uh, blue field. And the first one is uh, conceptualizer. The second one is formulator. And the third one is articulator. And what is conceptualizer? Basically, basically, conceptualizer is mainly a psychological uh, properties. Why? Whenever, suppose, whenever we are asked to say something about any topics or anything, what do we think first? Thinking happens first in our mind. As it is related to thinking, so this is a uh, psychological group. And uh, the, the second word is formulator. What does the formulator do? Formulator do uh, isolated ideas turn into sentences. I mean, it formulates. So, as it formulates the sentences and it is related to sentence, this is basically a uh, psycholinguistic layer. Uh, a linguistic layer. Sorry, linguistic layer. And the third one is what happens here. Uh, first, three things, and it happens in conceptualizers, then formulator, it turns uh, the isolated ideas that we uh, found in uh, conceptualizer, and then what uh, finally we do, articulator uh, produces uh, the sentences. I mean, uh, in articulator section, the sentences comes out uh, by uh, our larynx as sounds, and finally the sentence is produced. This is the uh, cognitive uh, level, and now I am going to uh, move to the next. Uh, Theory and here you see uh, this is the contrastive analysis theory and uh, this theory uh, is done by Robert Leyden and uh, he is uh, author of uh, linguistic across cultures and uh, this famous uh, theory and uh, he was also famous in 1960s to uh, 1970s and he, uh, the basic things of this contrastive theory is that uh, I mean basically it is a it is about uh, second language acquisition theory. Whenever we are, uh, want to learn a second language theory, uh, this theory is uh, applicable. So the main thing of this theory is that uh, if there is similarity between first language and second language, the 
acquisition of second language will be easier. And the second point is that if there is no similarity, and if there is less similarities and more similarities between first language and the second language, the acquisition of second language will be difficult. And there is another property, this is that uh, if there are some uh, points in first language and if there are some properties in uh, second language and uh, there is uh, absent or present, it is called uh, we, uh, first language has some properties that doesn't have uh, in uh, second language. So this is called absent and present. So there is, uh, if, they, uh, if there is uh, absent and present, then also the second language acquisition will be difficult. So uh, now I'm, uh, that's all about my uh, thought. Now I'm going to hand over my presentation to my next presenter, and uh, she is uh, Sabia Sobhanvi.